and welcome to this series on Mist Wired Assurance AI for the Wired Network. My name is Avi Shamsundar. I'm the Park Manager at Mist for all things Juniper Mist and integration. I'm happy to be here talking about this video series about uh, Wired Assurance. Uh, and this introductory video will focus on why Wired Assurance, what, do, what does this video series encompass, and how do we bring all of this together in the form of a course series for you. Uh, I hope you enjoy these video series. Wired Assurance uh, is one of our ways for us to say, we can help you automate every single step of the way in all things uh, day zero, day one, and day two. For us, day zero is about automation of provisioning, adoption of devices that are existing on your field, uh, primarily focused on the switching network, Deployment, uh, day one, talking about templatization, how do you uh, encompass configuration in large scale, uh, usage of colored and colorless ports. And day two, we'll focus on SLEs, Marvis actions and alerting, which will help you troubleshoot your network overall better. Now, automation in every step of this way uh, was the goal for the origin of missed wired assurance. Uh, Let's talk about a few elements of day zero. From a perspective of onboarding devices, you now have uh, existing brownfield devices that already exist on the network. Uh, these are existing Junos uh, devices, 2300s, 3400s, 4300s, 4100s, uh, 4100s now recently, um, as well as the distribution layer devices, 4650, QFX5120 and also the core devices, which is uh, QFX 10K, um, uh, the 9200s, as well as the uh, 5700s and 5130s in the QFX line. All of these devices can all be adopted as a brownfield adoption. But uh, since 2019, we've also been able to actually onboard devices uh, using just a QR code, and that's the greenfield onboarding process. In, our, uh, in a world of uh, cloud managed switches, uh, we'd like for our onboarding to be as console uh, free as possible. Uh, and that's the idea behind utilizing the same constructs that we used in the AP world to make uh, the switches onboarding extremely easy as well. Quick preview of how you would be able to make this possible using the mobile app. Uh, in, in order for you to bring devices on board, uh, MIST delivers a, an AI app called as the MIST AI app. And it's available both on uh, Apple as well as Android uh, uh, app, app stores. Now, for, a, for you to be able to um, onboard a device, all you would be able, all as an installer, uh, the installer role now has abilities for them to log into a mobile app, uh, go into the org of choice, go scan the QR code uh, that is on your devices. This is a QR code on, on a 4100. Uh, the claim, it has been claimed successfully. You can go into the actual switches, uh, take a picture of the switch, attach it to the same device, assign it to a site of choice like we just did, and also provide a name to this particular switch. This is the idea behind making the process of onboarding extremely seamless and simple uh, for especially uh, users uh, who are not very adept with uh, networking technologies. When you have a large number of devices to onboard as well, you now have the ability not only just to do claim code, just the way you just uh, uh, saw it in, a, in, in the previous section, but also you can activate them using an activation code. Every time you place a purchase order, uh, regardless the number of devices, be it APs, switches, or WAN devices, all can be combined into one purchase order and also can be claimed onto the dashboard altogether, your thousands of switches or thousands of APs in one shot using one activation code. And that's that's a combination of all claim codes as uh, to simply put it. So you can onboard greenfield devices either way using a claim code on a per device basis, onboarding activation code, just one shot, uh, and then being able to onboard devices every time. Subsequently, when a Juniper switch uh, is connected to an uplink where it can reach the cloud, it will automatically start the process of zero touch provisioning, go to the uh, cloud, uh, make the initial contact and get the config it requires and is ready for servicing its clients. 
if you have existing devices uh, on Brownfield, you are able to onboard them uh, by using seven lines of code uh, that you that is available on the dashboard, onboard them automatically, and then subsequently move further from there on as well. So both ways are available for you to onboard switches onto the dashboard. The next part of the story uh, is the actual configuration itself. There's a whole lot of depth that we uh, depth we go into in terms of uh, day zero, day one in, in the subsequent. Uh, this is a primer on how this is done. Uh, you will be able to configure global parameters uh, like you know services, radius, uh, stanzas, IP definitions, and VLAN definitions. Similarly, anything that that you think of from a routing perspective as well as spanning tree perspective. Uh, all of these form the global uh, piece. The second pillar of a interface con uh, of a switch configuration forms the interface configuration themselves. Interfaces um, for us, if you consider them as personas that come into your interface, then imagine there are multiple personas that, that attach to your switch. And each of them usually have the exact same configuration, uh, be it from the perspective of bringing on board devices. Um, uh, so for example, uh, the number of APs that connect to multitudes of switches, all of the APs have a very similar configuration. Uh, so you could create one persona or one port profile called as AP, and you could apply them across multitudes of switches so, uh, uh, and across different sites as well. And that's the idea behind templatization, the hierarchy and creation of port profiles in, in one shot. Uh, you subsequently are able to provision them manually. Uh, a lot of people have a, a lot of discipline or colored ports as they call in uh, to say, you can assign port ranges, port one to 10 as AP ports, 10 to 20 as camera ports and so on. Or you could also use dynamic port provision and that is unique uh, to a deployment from a, uh, from a standpoint of seeing a device can automatically identify itself or using a set of rules and you can on and you don't need to be in the business of provisioning a port every single other device comes online rather let the device identify itself and we can auto assign the port profile that you have already created for example if a if an ap matches a particular uh, lldp rule um, you can actually put them into the ap profile missed ap start with uh, lldp description starts with missed so you you match that and you put that put any device that matches that uh, to an AP profile. Similarly, you can do cameras um, and as a catch-all, you could also use just the MAC addresses. So some uh, simple examples as to, as to how dynamic port provision can also make your life easier in order to provision at scale. One of the most important things that we will cover as part of this video series is also campus fabric deployments. Um, the the deploy the the templatization and our ability to scale um, from a perspective of uh, onboarding distributed enterprises, be it switch onboarding, client devices onboarding, we've made that simple using dynamic port profiles, zero touch provisioning. Now, lar the larger the campuses, the more the advent of the technology of EVP and VXLAN in order to make uh, life simpler, uh, in order to make. Uh, the uh, the right architectural choice uh, for us to say large campuses going forward, especially given the IoT presence, requests for uh, L2 to be stretched across multitudes of buildings. Now there is a need uh, in large campuses for, for us to use VXLAN. And, uh, and with a control plane of EVPN, we're able to achieve scaling uh, to the tune of larger and larger campuses. With MIST, uh, although the technology is new for a lot of campus customers, uh, we've made the ability for us to configure these campus architectures simple. We'll talk about three important architectures and how you're able to sim uh, very easily provision them. Uh, the first one is EVPN multi-homing. Uh, uh, this is our ability for us to uh, use the technology of ESI lag or Ethernet segment identifier lag uh, from an access device perspective connecting to do different distribution devices or a collapse score, as you may call it. And the, from an access switch, you will still be a basic lag using LACP, but from a distribution switch perspective, although it's coming from, coming from a single device, you will treat them as the same lag or, or ESI lag, as we call it, and then achieve similar results as you did with some of the technologies like MC lag, 
which which was formerly uh, used in the same case. So I'll, I'll move ahead in, in, in the direction. So uh, try and uh, limit the number of spanning free instances just to the access switch itself and not go beyond. So you, if there are uh, any loops that may persevere in the network, that, that will only be within this closet. The, same, the construct of uh, camp, uh, the EVPN uh, VXLAN for a campus fabric also extends to core in distribution switches, which is the green blob that actually identifies to where they are. And that's the middle, uh, the middle architecture. So you could use the middle architecture as well for us to bring uh, devices on board. Uh, in terms of and also scale uh, campus wide and your L2 switching still need not be refreshed uh, in order for you to get to this architecture. You get the advantages, um, most advantages of uh, EVP and VXLAN as a technology, uh, barring one important one, which is covered in the last architecture, which is the IP Clow architecture, which also brings in the construct of micro segmentation, uh, segmentation enforced all the way at the axis utilizing what the technology of GBP or group-based policies. All of that, all of these are discussed in great detail, but the idea behind wire assurance though is um, we are able to deploy these uh, aspects as well using campus fabric deployment. So choose your topology, define the physical connections, define the networks of interest. These are all things that you do today. Uh, we're not asking you to uh, do anything from a perspective of enabling VNIs which are a construct of VXLAN, uh, but rather we'll still focus on elements that, that you care about, and then we apply the intent for you. So in, in a gist, uh, before we get into day two, we spoke about automation uh, being the heart of all things that, that we do uh, and how we make your life simple. Uh, we spoke about day zero onboarding, uh, using zero touch provisioning of devices. Uh, we spoke about day one, templatization, um, as well as the hierarchies, including how you'll get be able to onboard devices, uh, the client devices using dynamic port profiles. Uh, day two is, is the last piece of the puzzle. How are we able to not only address the day zero and day one, um, and as well as day two uh, is, is the focus of uh, wired assurance courses as well. There's a lot of ask about, do we need assurance on the wired network? Um, is, uh, is there an actual need? There's a host of problems that can persist on, on the wired network as well. And, and they, these are just a subset that you see in the word cloud here. Um, congested interfaces, speed issues, negotiation mismatches, bad cables, physical layer one issues, um, CPU spikes, uh, congestion on your network many, many, many uh, multitudes of issues. And these are run across thousands of ports that you run uh, in, in your uh, networks. How are we able to pinpoint exactly what you care about and bring that about to you uh, is, is the answer in the form of what we call as the SLE or the Service Level Experience Framework, subsequently Marvis Actions, um, as well as the Conversational Interface Framework. So these are the tools that will enable you uh, and make your life easy in terms of uh, troubleshooting, monitoring, and alerting. Um, uh, I identify all such issues and also ask simple questions to the Marvis conversational interface or con uh, Marvis CI, as we call it, wherein you can ask questions about, hey, troubleshoot this switch, troubleshoot this particular client, and how, how are we able to address and gather information for that? And that's 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 all things wired assurance. You'll, you'll hear uh, more about you know, day zero onboarding in detail, uh, day one configuration in detail, campus fabric configurations, as well as why you would move to campus fabric, uh, if, if at all, if there is a need for you and justification for so. And ultimately we'll focus on the day two uh, aspects as well, the service level experiences, Marvis actions, conversational interface. This was these, the, and this entire piece uh, of, of um, bringing assurance to the wired side of the house is one piece of the puzzle uh, that MIST uh, addresses. As you know, MIST has Wi-Fi assurance, wired assurance, as well as WAN assurance. Our end goal uh, is to answer that important question, why is my application experience bad? Uh, as you see, why is my Zoom call by, bad or breaking up is a question that we had uh, started on our journey to answer. And wired assurance is a significant piece of it. Uh, WAN assurance and Wi-Fi wi assurance in different courses as part of this also addresses how we collect information on those vectors as well. 
eventually. Uh, Marvis uh, is our AI engine that brings together all pieces of the puzzle together, and that's the journey we are headed. And wire assurance is a critical piece uh, towards this. Hopefully, this was this is, was a good introduction uh, as to what you could foresee um, in with um, uh, with what what's what's to come along this course. And I'd like to thank you uh, for starting this course journey with us.